Hello, and welcome once again to Family Historian. My name is Stephen Conti. Tonight we're heading north to Scandinavia, and we are going to learn about the genealogical record sources of the happiest country in the world, Denmark. And joining me on tonight's show, I am very honored to have as my guest a very fine genealogist. Her name is Wendy Hansen Hudson. Wendy is a Danish-American. She has been to Denmark on numerous occasions, and she is currently the staff genealogist for the Danish Archive Northeast right here in New Jersey. And on tonight's show, Wendy is going to teach us how we can find our Viking ancestors in Denmark. And now let's welcome Wendy Hansen Hudson. Wendy, welcome to my show. Thank you, Steve. I love your name, Hansen, which is like Smith or Jones in Denmark. Is that correct? That's true. And let's talk about your Danish immigrant ancestor before we get into the how-to of doing Danish genealogy. Who was that person and when did he come here? My great-great-grandfather was Andreas Christian Hansen, and he came to the United States in 1880. Mm -hmm. And then his wife and the six children followed a year later in 1881. Right, and you descend from one of the sons. Yes. I see. Now you told me that, I'm sure there were Danes in America many, many years ago, mm -hmm. but what were the main immigration years for the Danes coming to our shores? The bulk of the immigration was between 1880 and 1920. Right. And there are some towns in New Jersey, I never knew this until Wendy came along, name those towns where many of the Danes went to. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a few centers, one was Perth Amboy in Middlesex County, uh, then also Hoboken and Jersey City, mm -hmm. and then Oxford uh, up in the northwestern part of the state. Right, I never knew there were so many Danes right here in New Jersey. And also in New York, you had them where? In the Bronx and Brooklyn were, uh, section, were primary uh, settlements. Right. And then uh, upstate in um, Rochester mm -hmm. uh, and in Penn Yan and in Troy. Right, mm -hmm. excellent, I never knew this. Now, many of the Danes would use New Jersey as a stopping off point before they went west. And where did they wind up in the west? Uh, when they went west, they went to uh, the area of Iowa, Kansas, Nebraska, and some went as far as California. And up in Canada, I understand. Yes, a lot went to Canada also. Right, right. And what was the reason why the Danes came to America, Wendy? Most came for work. Uh, they were looking for uh, to make uh, a home here and to find work and to prosper. Right. Now, we do have a map of Denmark, and Wendy is going to tell us where in Denmark her ancestors came from, her great-great-grandpa, uh, and what part of Denmark is this? He came from the uh, section of Yulin, which is uh, the most western section of Denmark, uh, and in the south, right along the German border. Right, right. Now, you prepared a wonderful how-to genealogy outline for me and my viewers, Danish gene genealogy. Of course, we have to start, the, the Danish American starts with themselves, asking older relatives. It, it's uniform for all nationalities. But we do have examples of some very distinctive Danish American records that Wendy is going to show us right now. And the first one we have are Danish American Lutheran church records. The Danes are Lutheran for the most part. most part. And you said at one time Perth Amboy had how many churches? It had three Danish churches at uh, uh, one time. And uh, they are still in existence, but they have moved out of Perth Amboy at this point. Right. And you did bring an example of a yes. Danish uh, American church. Yes. And can you uh, read that to us and explain how that's written okay. for us? Um, it's the baptisms, uh, and it gives the name of the child. Um, the uh, second one here is Wilhelm Erikson. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he it gives his parents' names, his fa son of Theodore Erikson, 
uh, and his wife, Sophie Jorgensen. And one of the key points is that the Danes usually put the maiden name of the mother in their records. Right, right. And then it gives the birthplace, Perth Amboy in this case, um, and the birth date, uh, and the witnesses to the event. Does it give where in Denmark the family came from? No, it does not. It does not. And these are all in Danish? All in Danish. Okay, and then you have these all on microfilm now, or you have scanned many of these. We have a lot of these on microfilm, and we've also indexed a lot of the records. And this is part of the Danish Archive Northeast, which is magnificent, and we'll talk about that later in our show. Okay, then you have another example of a Danish uh, church record, I believe or a record of Danish uh, lodges. Lodges. The Danes often uh, joined Danish Brotherhood or Danish Sisterhood lodges in mm -hmm. the United States. Yeah. Uh, and those lodge records are very important um, because they give um, the a lot of information and the place in Denmark that they were often born. Right. So right. it gives the name, it gives their birthplace, it gives their birth date. Um, and then um, other general information about where they were living in the United States. But the origin in Denmark, where they came from. Yes. So that's the record that takes you across the ocean. Yes. Very right. important for the Danish-American researcher. Yes. Excellent. Okay. And we have indexed a lot of those records and have them on our, our website. Right, right. So beginning with Danish-American church records, mm -hmm. of course, and then the Danish Brotherhood and Danish Sisterhood, and they both kept excellent records. Yes. Were the Danes uh, joiners when they came here? They had a lot of clubs and organizations. In Perth Amboy, there was Dana Hall, which they had uh, uh, social events at. There was Danish Brotherhood, Danish Sisterhood, Danish Singing Society. There was a lot of, of organizations that they belonged to. So they kept their culture alive, yes. even today. Yes, the Danish Brotherhood and Danish Sisterhood in the Perth Amboy area are still in existence. Very active. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, now we've done our American research in, in two minutes. Now let's go to the homeland, okay. uh, uh, Denmark. And now you told me in your wonderful outline, there are four main sources for the Danish genealogist. And can we go over them right now, if we may? And yes. the first one we have are Danish census records. And give us the years when Denmark kept a census. Dan Danish uh, census records started in the 1770s and go up until 1930. Wow. And then they will open more up, I guess, in the future, as we do here. I believe so. All right, and do we have an example of one yes, here? Yes, we and do. If you can tell us the example okay. of that. Yes. We, um, uh, this is an example that is indexed. Um, a number of the records are indexed, uh, mm -hmm. not all of them, but okay. a number of them. Uh, this was an example of one that's indexed, and it gives the, uh, all members of the household their full names, um, their ages, uh, their marital status, their occupation, and their birthplace. So that's very good for um, locating people that moved around in Denmark. Right, and these are all available on? Online. Online, right. okay. And we're going to feature an online link for you to follow. It's very long, but we will put that up on our screen for all of these wonderful sources. So uh, these records are wide open to the public. Yes. And you really don't have to go to Denmark. No. You can do all your research here. We do a great deal of the research here, especially in, in the census records and uh, the vital records. And this is part of the Danish Archive Northeast. Well, it's part of the Danish archives in Denmark that provides all, of this, all of this information. And you have them here. And we, you can access them from here. Right. So all of these records, the exact copy of these can be found in Copenhagen, mm -hmm. or in online. which is the capital of Denmark. Yes. Okay. And now, have you done research over there with original records? I have not. Um, the, the amount of records online are so good that I really haven't had a uh, need to really do, go there and do research. So you can just go to Denmark as a tourist yes. after you have done all your work here. Yes. And then find out where your family came from mm -hmm. and visit that hometown. Okay. 
Now we have the archival records in Copenhagen, and these include, uh, you have here baptisms, confirmations, marriages, and, and of course, death records. Now, can you tell our viewers, this is very unique, I never knew this, about government records and religious church records. Can you tell our viewers about that? Well, they're really uh, one and the same. The um, Lutheran church records are the government records. They are the vital records for the country. So it's, you're not going to a religious record and a, and a state record. It really is one record. They are synonymous. Yes. Okay. And the Lutheran church is the state church. Yes. Now, is that in all of Scandinavia? I believe so, but I'm not as familiar with the other Scandinavian countries. Because I know the Lutheran religion mm -hmm. uh, is prominent in Norway, Sweden, yes. Denmark, Iceland. Yes. Very good. I think even Finland. I believe so. Right. Okay. Now, can you show us some examples? Now, these are what we call archival records. Yes. This is government and or church records. Right. In uh, this case, it's a baptism record, mm -hmm. um, and it gives the, um, this, is, this one happens to be a baptism record from a church in Copenhagen, uh, and it gives the birth date, the full name of the child, their baptism date, the full name of the parents, the occupation of the father, and the um, uh, location of where the birth took place and then also the witnesses to right. the event. Sometimes they will also include the marriage date and marriage place of the parents. So it's very useful genealogical record. Right. Would you say Danish genealogy is very methodical, very efficient, as most Scandinavians are? It's very precise. Uh, the names are very precise. Uh, the, uh, the record keeping was very well done. Uh, and all of these are online and available, and the Danish records are entirely free to access. Right, it's that open there. Mm -hmm. Very good. How far back do the, well, you call it government and church, how far back do the church records go? In some churches, they'll go back into the 1600s. To the time of Luther. I guess, yes. Or, or he was before then, I think. I, I don't think, know. I believe so. Yeah, and they are all in what language? Oh, they're all in Danish. All in Danish, not in the Latin language. Yes. No. But in the earlier records before 1800, they tend to be in the old Danish script, uh, which is you have to uh, study quite a bit to understand the old Danish script, but it is Danish. Right, right. All right, so now we have done those two. Okay, or do you have more uh, records there from the... Uh, the vital records. From no. the government record, okay. Now here's one that's very interesting. The Copenhagen Police Registration. What is that all about? Can you give us some background on what that's all about? And the years we have for those are, are what? The years? I believe it's 1890 to 1921-ish. I think it's 1923. 1923, okay. okay. And what, what, what is the purpose of this? The uh, police... Um, had essentially a, a town census or a town um, uh, directory mm -hmm. of all the people uh, and for each person they would record uh, each time they went to do this census um, they would record the address that the person lived at and any people living at that address with them right uh, and so over a period of time it will show all of the addresses that somebody lived in Copenhagen mm -hmm. Okay, and, and it's very useful for accessing the census records or anything else. You know, I think we had a police census in New York at one time. I believe so. Uh, I don't know the years of that one, but I had heard of a police census. And what information would be on the police census, uh, Wendy? Okay, the, the one nice thing is, is this is searchable, and so it gives you the original record, and then it also gives you the translation of the record next mm -hmm. to that. So. Mm -hmm. You have the person's full name, uh, their birth date, their birthplace, um, all of the addresses and the dates for each of those um, uh, at apartments or, or houses that they lived in. Um, and then this one is unusual in that um, this person went to America in 1915 and died there in 1921 and his death date is in the Danish records. 
So it's like the whole history of a person. I mean, their, their life, uh, life record mm -hmm. would be here. Yes. Uh, it gave the birth date of the person, the location where they lived in uh, Copenhagen or yes. where in mm -hmm. Copenhagen. Now in this Copenhagen. is just in Copenhagen. Just in Copenhagen. So if you lived in, on the outskirts, you were not in this census. Right. You were in the regular government. Regular, regular census. I see. Now these are available again online. And they're fully searchable, so even if you just had the birth date of your ancestor, you could search strictly by birth date, I mean, not even with name. So. Right. Now, I was telling our viewers in the intro that Wendy is the staff genealogist for the Danish Archive Northeast in Edison, New Jersey. Yes. Now, are you the person who obtains these records and does all of this microfilming and scanning and making these available? Well, we do the microfilming, indexing, and scanning of the records in the United States for uh, the Danish records in the United States, the lodge records and, mm -hmm. and some of the church records. Um, all of this, uh, all the Danish records have been scanned by the Danish archives and are available online. And do you work with the Danish archives? Do you have any, any kind of a, a relationship with them? Not other than using their online free records that they, uh, we can search and, and bring them up and use them and put them into our research. We help uh, anyone that contacts us about their Danish ancestry and, and we will help them find these records and, and uh, give them the specifics of their ancestry. Right. Tell me, many of my viewers have been to the family history centers of the Mormon Church, as you have. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were out in Utah recently. Yes. yes. Are copies of these, do they have access to these records? Yes, anyone has access to them anywhere in the world. Um, and, and the Mormons have microfilmed they have, Denmark. They have uh, microfilmed, but they've also indexed a lot of the records that are not yet indexed in Denmark. So it's very handy to use the Borman uh, website to uh, search for a name or a person in Denmark, uh, and then they will point you to like a town that they, they lived in or were married, you know. Right, married. and I believe they've microfilmed a great deal of Denmark, a good I believe, percentage of I believe it. they have, yes. Yeah, because many Mormons are of Danish descent. Yes, a lot of, uh, a lot of Danes early on um, came and went to Utah. Uh, to become Mormons. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very popular. Now, the last one that we have, Danish Emigration Database. So this is yes. the, f the fourth major source that the Danish American can get their hands on. Yes. Tell us what that's all about. Essentially, when the uh, person bought a ticket to go to the United States or anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. um, they would get registered in this database. So the, uh, they would have to give their name and their age. Um, many cases they gave their birthplace. Um, they, they also gave the last place that they resided. Uh, and they gave their destination of where they were going to uh, and also the ship that they were traveling on. So it's very handy to use these records to find um, the passenger lists for uh, a Dane coming into the United States. Right, and the years that we have here uh, for the Danish Emigration Database, you told me 1869 mm -hmm. to? 1908. 1908, mm -hmm. and these are accessible through? Uh, they're accessible online and free to use and free to search. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Now we are going to hold up that very long uh, I know, so take notes tonight. <laughs> this would be the link to all of these records that we have spoken about. The link we're providing is the one to our website, which then has a page full of all the links to all the Danish websites, um, all the indexes, all the passenger lists, everything that you could search. So it's a handy place in one spot to, to get access all these links. Right, and then people can always contact you, of course. Yes, we're happy to help people with their Danish uh, ancestry. Um, we have done so with a lot of different people, both here and in Denmark. We have helped a lot of people in Denmark find their, their relatives in the United States, and we've helped people in the United States find their ancestry in Denmark. Very good. And we do have a photo of uh, 
Wendy Hanson Hudson at her desk. I, I don't know if you have seen this photo, but we do have it. Uh, working on, I think it might be microfilming or you're yes. doing something there. We were microfilming church records in Perth Amboy. Right. And so we, so we do that often. We try and get access to records so that we can preserve them and then we can index them and use them in our research. Right. Now, I want to talk about DANE. D-A-N-E, and that stands for, you're on, what does that stand for? Danish Archive Northeast. Danish Archive Northeast, and we're in the Northeast, and how long have you been in existence? Th since 2001, uh, we started. Uh, we are trying to preserve the Danish uh, culture, traditions, and genealogy of the groups that came to the Eastern Coast eastern U.S. Right. And uh, you do have a physical location. Uh, I mean, there is a place to go to. I mean, yes. all of your work is done on the computer. Right. Uh, right. But tell us about, and I have been to the location. It's right here in Edison, New Jersey, and it's housed in a beautiful, lovely building, the Danish home. Right. Okay. The Can you tell us about the Danish home? The Danish home started as a, a home for the elderly Danes who were part of the brotherhood and sisterhood. And they uh, lived there in a kind of an assisted living mm -hmm. capacity. For, right. for The home was in operation for 100 years. And then um, it stopped being a home for the aged and became a museum and a cultural center for the Danes. Right, and I was there a few weeks ago, and it's, it's just so enchanting. Uh, you're driving on 287, which is a very a busy highway, and then you just make one exit, I think it's the New Durham exit, mm -hmm. and a quick left, and you're in Denmark. And the Danish home is fashioned like an old Danish farmhouse. It is so enchanting, and my fine guest, Wendy Hansen Hudson, gave me a wonderful tour of the museum and they have many cultural events going on there and uh, they also have genealogy workshops yes and how often do you have those we have those about once a year uh, where we will um, get together a group of people and talk about special research topics or also uh, we will get together and um, work on our records so that we have a good uh, foundation for our genealogy right and Dane, Danish Archive Northeast, does have its own newsletter. And what does that contain? Uh, mm. News about what has been found or what's going on or what? <laughs> we have various different articles in our mm -hmm. newsletter. It comes out a few times a year. And it um, talks about our recent events, if we've had a Christmas event or if we've had a, a harvest festival, things like that. It also talks about uh, some topics of genealogy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, any somebody that has had a special uh, success with their genealogy, we, they have written articles. And then we ha talk about Danish culture. Right. So it's all under one roof. Yes. And there's another Danish home. Where is that located? That's in Croton, New York. Croton on Hudson, New York. Right, and I do have a, a, a brochure, uh, the Danish Beacon, and is this for the Brotherhood and Sisterhood? Is this there? It's really a, a Danish publication from the East Coast and uh, covers the, the Danish home in Croton, uh, our organization in Edison, and all the Brotherhood and Sisterhood organizations. And the events that you have there are, are, are wonderful, I hear. Everyone has a good time. I want to go to your Christmas party. We love it. Uh, I'd love uh, to have you. Yeah, I would love to go see that. Uh, we also have some other pamphlets here. Uh, Danes in America. And this will tell you about what the, the Danes are doing in America. That's the Danish American um, uh, Archive and Library. Oh, very good. And that mm -hmm. is? Uh, that is in... Uh, the Midwest. The Midwest, The yep. Midwest, okay. And then you have the Danish Museum in Nebraska. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we also showed you the uh, newsletter for, what, what is the, uh, it's, it has a name, your newsletter? Uh, Nordost. 
which translates into? Northeast. Northeast, okay, okay, <laughs> very good. And so it's been there since 2001. Yes. Okay, do you have any closing words to my Danish-American viewers or anybody out there who is in love with the Danes as I am <laughs> about doing research? Um, Danish research is uh, easier than you may think. Uh, there's a lot of records available. There's a lot of um, things that you can access very quickly. Uh, and then you can also contact us and we will help you. Right. And we're going to hold up that contact information at the end of our show. Well, uh, Wendy, this has been a wonderful interview with Wendy Hansen Hudson, a genealogist for the Danish Archive Northeast in Edison, New Jersey. Please visit the Danish home if you're in that area, and Wendy or someone else will give you a tour of the museum. And again, thank you for coming on Family Historian. Thank you. And on that note, as I have been saying for many, many years, remember, we are all descendants of ancient civilizations. Genealogy is your key to the history of your family. And so until next time, this is Stephen Conti wishing you the very best of luck in your research and above all, happy ancestor hunting. Good night.